you're transmitting to the whole world. But the number one, or the, the small number, says, I'm going to transmit along with what you're saying, a little sub-audible tone. Nobody can hear it, but the radio will take that as a key to turn on. So, your, your radio with which you're transmitting to has to have the same big number and the same small number for you to listen to. Right? If the small number doesn't match the big number, I mean, the small number doesn't match the small number, the big number doesn't match the big number on both radios, you won't talk. So it's a sub-audible tone is what that means. It's also in your handout under GMRS, right, um, excuse me, <clears throat> FRS radios. Kind of describing that, yes. Can you give us an example and you the double W-A and the big number and all that Oh, this one? Well, you're going to be talking to each other. I don't understand. You're saying two, two radio. You ever use the walkie-talkie? Oh, well, not much. Okay, you know the kids' walkie-talkies? You're generally in the 49 megahertz range. That's also in your handout. The walkie-talkie, it's easy. You pick it up and you talk. Right? FRS radios are a little more complicated. Is that you have the base number. In this case, it's number 20. And then this little small number is number 4. Right? That's just, so it's channel 20, and the small number, sub-audible tone is number 4. That's what that means. You have to be on the same one. However, there are radios that just have the base number 1 with no subtones, which means is they're really going to be useless because you can hear everything. There's no sub subtones. Whatever comes across in that channel is... Everybody can hear. So if you ever buy a radio, okay, make sure it has a lots of base frequencies, channels one through how many you can get, and the small numbers as many as you can get. Okay, that gives you a better chance of getting your own frequency that you can talk on. Does that make sense? Can we clear on that one? Yes. Different subject. Uh, is, can we do this VECC reverse 911's quote unquote uh, online at this southernc.org? You know, I don't know. Okay. And is that only for the cell phones? I would use on every phone. I register all your phones. As I understood, they already have the, the telephones that are, that are on the landline. Are, are landline. They have your landline number. But how many people are getting rid of getting rid of their landline? Quite a few people, right? So you you need to register your cell phone number. Okay. Excuse me for drinking in front of you. It tastes really good. <laughs> so so go to the South Jordanwood City website and uh, register your number. Uh, I think you can do it online. Uh, if not, do some research on it. There's a big web page there you can read and, and follow along on. All right. Um, now, now the final word before we go into the next phase about amateur radios. There are three different basic kinds of radios for the amateur in the amateur world. I got two different kinds here. I got a handheld, okay, which is mobile. I mean, handheld, I can pick it up and move it, walk it around. And its maximum output watts is 5 watts. Maximum output, that's the most they can do. Okay, good, because you don't want to fry your brain, right? So maximum output is 5 watts. Now we go up to the next step, which would be mobile. This is a, a car mount, for example. You can see it kind of mounts on the car there. Little hand mic, a uh, little antenna comes out the back, still battery operated. Uh, these guys can go up to 50 watts. This is a 50 watt unit, or maybe even more for some, but generally 20 to 50 watts. So the farther you go, it depends on two things, antenna and power. In this case, power is watts. So have you ever heard uh, your, atti your attitude determines your altitude? <laughs> 
In the amateur world, it's just opposite. Your altitude determines your attitude. The higher up your antenna is, the happier you are. Okay? So, if you think of, this is a mobile rig. It's a mobile. And then you have what's called an HF, high frequency, or a big giant station. Those bad boys are expensive and complicated, but they're a whole lot of fun. Okay, they're just a whole lot of fun. For those, both HF rigs, there are people, and there's competitions, that I transmit a signal that way, and I listen for it on this way, which means it goes past California, past Japan, across Russia, back on the other side, hits Europe, comes across the Atlantic, across the United States, and I listen to it. Wouldn't that be cool? Who could you contact if you had that capability? Anyone. So what did the church use in Katrina? That's what they used. That's how they did it. They used HF, or the big radios, and they contacted other amateur radio operators who had their own space station, their own mode of operation. And they were using solar panels, batteries, and radios like this to contact from Louisiana to Texas. That's how you do it. That's how you get communications across the region, across the state, across the western United States by just turning on the radio, hitting a repeater, and you're there. Okay? Pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It takes a test. Don't get afraid of the test. All right. So, so this is some of my stuff. So this I borrowed for tonight so we can see the, the mobile rig. And I have a little solar panel. Um, this is my 15 watt solar panel. Uh, I actually have to have three of them to get 45 watts to really charge up a camper battery. So that's really good for my family. Uh, if you're interested, uh, this stake is offering a Goal Zero uh, product line. Go to GoalZero.com to learn about it. They have a 45 watt panel. It's like a suitcase folds out. It's mobile. Mine's portable. I can pick it up and carry it around. I think it's heavy. This thing's like a little suitcase. Best stuff on the market. It's really great. But I had my solar panels before these guys came out with theirs. So, uh, consider that kind of that information. Uh, use it. Because it should be nice to have your cell phone charged on day five of a power outage if you need to. Would you agree? Or you can go to your car, turn on the gas, you know, use a gasoline just to charge your cell phone. Uh, yes? Question? No? Okay, good. All right, so in your handout, uh, should be the last pages. You should have a little handout. It looks like, yes, can you scroll yours up really quick? Okay. Family emergency plan. Does this look complicated to you? How many people, by raise of hand, has a family communication plan with each family member? Meaning, who they contact, out of state contact, and phone number, and name, and perhaps relatives, a meeting place in your neighborhood, have a meeting place in the region, in case you're at school and you come home and can't get back to your house, how many of those, how many of you have a communication plan like that? Part of it. Great. Okay? And does your kids know how to operate it? Right? So, right now, you have a few minutes. Write in your ICE number. ICE means in case of emergency. So, if an emergency responder comes up to you and finds a cell phone, they're going to look for ICE. In case of emergency, I-C-E. 